So finally, we are going to hear from Melissa Schemans to talk to us about Melissa Lifestyle. Melissa. Good morning, everyone. My morning. name is Melissa. Morning. I'm Pardon, sorry. okay. <laughs> Melissa Schimans. Um, I welcome you to the presentation of Melissa Lifestyle. We are a health and lifestyle coaching company, and we dedicate our services especially for businesses. So we start off this presentation with a little bit of instruction, a comparison between a piece of charcoal and a diamond. So they're quite identical from the chemical composition. Uh, but there is a big difference. The diamond over all the time learned how to manage stress very well. This is why he becomes extraordinary with the time. To introduce this to the bigger problem we are facing right now in the modern society is stress. A lot of diseases are based on stress, major stress levels. We have suicidal rates. We have um, everything is like very increasing right now. From this you can see a huge circle is forming. We start off with a lack of knowledge. In the school system, we don't really get the um, education provided to know about our self, about our body, how our body works, nutrition-wise, what we need. We start to create unhealthy eating habits, and also there is a lack of movement. Nowadays, we have a lot of time pressure. So from this, we may even carry unhealed trauma from the past. Everybody has their own backpack. We don't know really now how to deal with this. So we start maybe even consuming substances which are not good for us to just suppress it. And we go from this, a major confusion is forming. We don't really know who can help us. We try to seek out two different people, but everyone is not really addressing the fact that everything comes together. So with this, we have here the facts. Leading cause right now is stress in the occupational um, disease in the world. We have one trillion dollars globally in lost productivity because of this. We move on. American based. We have one million people right now who are not going to work this day right now because of stress. Stress formed diseases. We move to this, if I'm sick, I'm going to go to medical care, health care. We have 190 billion every year for health care. And if I'm stressed, I cannot really work anymore. I might think about changing my job. <laughs> so with this, we have to rate 40% right now from job turnover. We all know what that means for the employer if everyone is always quitting and changing. We have a holistic approach in this business to really enhance knowledge about yourself, implement a healthier lifestyle in the company itself. So you have the knowledge how to lower your stress level, how to lower the stress, um, the stress level in this company itself. So you really want to go to work because you feel good, you feel healthy. And also you increase the productivity over time with this. I'm Melissa Schiemens. I come from a background about a healthy lifestyle. I did have my own challenges, also stress-related and health-wise. I'm educated as a physiotherapist, health coach. I studied yoga and meditation in India itself because I really wanted to learn from the source. <laughs> um, I always work with, uh, globally with clients from all over the world by being based in Spain. Um, and I see that we all face the same challenges and we also face the same goals we have in life. We want to have the best life and make the best of our time. By providing our services with seminars and workshops, which we focus on doing virtually to really reach a lot of people globally, um, but it also can be um, in person based on the location. We have packages as monthly and weekly sessions which are tailored to the needs of the company. We include the basic the knowledge of the body, the mind, how everything is working, create better uh, nutritional healthy habits and how to manage stress, be more mindful about this, how we can implement all these in the daily life. Physical fitness is a big thing too, to have prevention of the stress causing more effects. 
And yoga meditation also can be even given as after work activities. Right now, what I see out in the market is we do have a lot of apps where we can seek knowledge and find um, information about how to deal and manage stress. But we have also on the other side coaching companies, customized even on your needs. But I don't see that it's really holistic, everything included with nutrition and physical fitness and the mind and the stress. So I'm coming from a place out of experience through my own experience and from my clients. This is why I came up to customize and put the holistic approach in to create Melissa lifestyle. Our goal right now is by September 2023 to work with one company here based in the US and one company based in Europe and increase this later to six businesses in 24 in March. And the major goal here is to actually go into the adolescence in the future to prevent all this from happening. That already the teenagers, the children now, about their body, how to deal with stress, because we cannot avoid stress. We just need to learn how to deal with it in our daily lives. Our team is me, Melissa Schimans. I'm the founder and CEO, along with Elise Diaz, who is the marketing strategy manager, and Sean as my mentor. We also want to go in the big picture to have a co-founder in the US and one co-founder in Europe. Coming back, our rounds to the chocolate and the diamond again. <laughs> Every day you have the choice how you deal with stress. If you learn how to manage it over time, or if you remain a piece of chocolate and get burned out at one point, or if you become extraordinary. So how you can help us is by whether become a team member yourself or to refer us to local businesses from here so we can help and start moving this business to reach out to people and provide our services. I'm Melissa Schiemens, here are my contact details. Feel free to reach out for any questions and thank you for your attention. Yes. Question. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Uh, who is your target client specifically? In other words, who's paying for this? Is it the company? Is it their employees? Is it an individual person? Can you just give a little more detail around that, please? Okay, yes, so the thought behind it is to really get to the CEOs of the companies to sell the services so they can use it for their employees. So they can really implement these, all the services and we can teach the employees how to take better care of themselves, but also the CEOs, like everything, because if the CEO is still stressed, Nothing going to change so is there. The company, is the company going to pay for the employees or is the employees paying for it themselves? No, the company. Okay. The business is paying, so like implementing this as a service okay. for the employees. You mentioned in one of your slides that you had a goal of one U.S. business and one European business by this past March. Have you done that? Was that past March? No, it was from no, next. It was March of 2023. Okay. This, we go there. But um, it's meant... No, 24. Oh, September, I got you. Okay, yes. <laughs> your phone number is incomplete from your, on your contact slide. Excuse me? Your phone number is incomplete. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Eric only has three numbers. Yeah. After the. Okay, that might be due yeah, to the editing right. process. <laughs> Feel free to reach out to the email address, which is complete. <laughs> but also, if you scan the code, there are the details. That it's a really old phone number. Pennsylvania 6. Also, um, Sean wanted to add. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a great example of closer. pivoting. Closer. Just closer. Yeah. This is a great example of pivoting. She is very successful by herself, doing alone, but there's a limit. She can't scale it. She has only 24 hours a day. So, she wanted to do reach more people one day our dream is to go globally but we want to start locally in a small way grow our business model and go from there and she has an amazing thing going on here she's self-funding it we are not asking for any money right now 
But once the business model is valid and it's repeatable and scalable, she will be receiving money later. So it's an amazing model. I think this is the way one should be doing the pivoting. She went from individual to group. That's what she going from person to person, mostly wife uh, virtual. Same. Goal is the same: helping people succeed, healthier and happier life. So I have a question. Um, so you you're offering a, a holistic way uh, approach to yeah. personal health, okay? So uh, and you offer a lot of different things, okay? Yeah. Do you have a program by which you take people through each level and show them how it all fits together? So with this. Is that so? Yeah. Um, with this, the thought behind is that this could be elements each company could choose from. For example, oh, we only want to implement nutritional um, eating habits in our company. Oh, we only want stress management. But the push from my side is really holistically to have all this implemented and to explain actually as an introduction kind of how this all goes together hand in hand for everyone individually. Because if you have a bad nutrition, and let's say you have a mental condition, you have uh, depression, you will never really heal from this if your nutrition is really bad. It affects your body, it affects your mind. Um, yes, you want to see the question? Oh, would you go back to your information slide? Yes. Now scan that, and the unique thing is I can immediately, from this scan, add her to my contact base. I've never seen that before. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. <laughs> I don't need to look at the bottom of the bottom. Do a throw on me. Okay. Um, yeah, the confusion that I had when I was looking at this is the biggest problem that most businesses have, in my opinion, in my experience, yeah. is what happens when there's a stumble? What happens when there's an obstacle? How do you overcome those obstacles in a business setting? Because it doesn't matter who you work with, yeah. it's not gonna work perfectly, ever. Yeah. So how do you get over those obstacles? Well, we would, we would always be tailoring the program. So we do need to know what's the obstacle from this company itself. And but our goal is really to deal with like to how to manage with it as i said stress is always there time pressure is always given but you need to have how to deal with this you need to learn how to deal with this what can you do what can you how can you implement exercises um mindfulness exercises everything so you can deal with this better and overcome the bigger obstacle if a company fails because everyone is stressed and burned out the obstacle always going to be there and it's even growing. So this approach is really so people know how to take care of themselves, implement this in the team, and the team can overcome the obstacle better. Yes. Anybody in your community has any degrees in stress management? Right. So yeah. you, you specialize, you know, people can really hook on to and say, okay, she is, that's what she does. That's what you always say. Like, I'm, I'm, I work with people a lot um, who do substance abuses, and it all comes down from stress from their work or from unhealed traumas. So I do come from a side of experience, but I also have a person right now based in, um, in Spain, which is psychologist, which is really having a degree in stress management and everything. And I want to probably have her in my team now too. So only to have this officially also. I do have my experience also in the health coaching and from the yoga and meditation um, license. But yeah, a clinical Literary gonna be there too. Yes. Yes. Remember, I need a microphone. Remember when I spoke to you before about one million cups? This to me is something you need to get the information out. You don't know who's going to see this, who's going to want this. Yeah. Make this presentation to many one million customers. I mean, yeah. you can do it remotely. You can do five different time zones. You can yeah. do it. You can do five in one day. The more yeah. that you do, 
You don't yeah. know who's in that audience because like, that's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. That's what you need to find. Yeah. Get you going. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, back to my question. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that your 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 approach is uh, most purely scientific. With the little yoga and the, you know, the, all the other the nutrition and everything yeah. else, right? So you're not getting into any of the metaphysical things? Um, <laughs> Chakras, energy, things like that? Oh, no, no, no. So okay. there, there is, I mean, there is a very in-depth when it comes to spiritualism and meditation, yoga-wise. But it's like really for people to understand this. If you later want to really... Um, go specifically in one of those. My my intention is like okay, I want to keep it holistic. So you have like let's say ninety percent of everything. But if you want the full one hundred, I can refer you to people like also to a psychologist if there is major major issues or major interest in the subject. Okay, I do have my people. I have my backup. I refer you to this person. But I do know that if I work with a lot of people, I can only give as much um, information as I can. I cannot work individually with everyone and really see, okay, where are you coming from? What is your background? How is your mental state? So for me, it's more about education, to provide education and for you to really know how to help yourself with this and implement this in the company. And another question, if I may. Um, so we've had a number of people come through here that are offering similar services. Yeah. So how do you stand above them? How do you, how, how do you how do people find you as opposed to the ten thousand others that are in the area? What 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 makes you stand out? So that is a good question. <laughs> um, I think. Everyone, if, if it comes to coaches, if it comes to trainers, it's always something personal more. How you can deal with somebody's energy, how do you feel around them. <clears throat> I have people, clients reaching out to me more often than I'm reaching out to people. I don't do a lot of marketing. I should work on this more also. <laughs> but in my experience now with my clients, they seek out for me because I getting referred and people giving me the feedback, okay, they feel good with me, they feel like I come from my own experience and I can help them and be empathetic and really know what's going on by working with them together. And I think this is not something from my side personally, I don't want to go into a big competition marketing-wise and sales. For me, it's not about the money to have a major imperium because based on money. It's more about helping people, really, and the right people, for me, they're going to want my services instead of other services where they cannot identify maybe with. Yes. So can you go back to the, uh, one more, one more, one more, there you go. Yes. Okay, so a couple of things as you present this to corporations, because yeah. if you're going to present it to CEOs, if that's your buyer. Yeah. <laughs> you need to know what their pit of despair is. I mean, I, I know you say people miss work and stuff like that, yeah. but what is happening to them actually? Yeah. And what is their problems? What are the events that are triggering their pains? What are the those yeah. people that are causing those pains to their employees? Yeah. You know, if, because if you're in a tech company, it's one whole set of things. Yeah. If you're in a manufacturing company, it's an yeah. entirely different set. Yeah. So you need to understand more about your ideal client. And then yeah. also, it would be helpful to see a path yeah. that you would take the company through. Yeah. So where's your step A? Where's your step B? What, okay. what, where are you starting with them and what is it going to look like at the end? Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Rupert mentioned science and yoga. Do you know how scientists measure the effectiveness of yoga? With an ohm meter. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm a dad. What is, what is a I was thinking about corporate culture and decision making and how it might be limiting to just be asking for CBOs, but also but then that made me think about the size of the corporation and your ability to scale. Yeah. So I, 
I, I want to say like go after HR directors, go yeah. after the HR because they're the ones that are actually providing the benefits and will just bring it to the CEO as this is what we're doing and the CEO goes, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah. But in those instances, they're really big. Like yeah. I'm thinking of like the AAA National Office or yeah. Deloitte or yeah. you know, those that that's too big for you at this moment until you can scale out or <clears throat> so like so your min is twenty, but what what's your max? Well, the max <laughs> right now is really starting slowly, step by step. Uh, but I'm open. Basically, I'm open to try this and apply this because I think I can always help in a certain way because it's a, it's an approach to really help. So, as I said, also the approach is really um, tailored on the company. So. I'm, I must talk with them first to really find out, okay, what's their goal, how, how much impact they want, how, what they're expecting from me, if I can deliver it yet. So, yeah. We have a question here. Yes. Yeah, um, kind of along similar lines. I know with the company I work for, HR is always looking for um, additional health and wellness benefits that yeah. specifically will give um, additional breaks on insurance for the employees. Yeah. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll offer incentives like, oh, $40 towards your gym membership yeah. or whatever. Is there any way that this can kind of be wrapped into that sort of package? Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> I didn't mention it, but my thought is also maybe moving on and working together with insurance companies to offer it as a service which can be implemented as well as and their gym membership, preventional, they can attend a workshop or a seminar, which is every month or every week, however they want to implement it, but also as a prevention. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you do what Rupert mentioned with, as far as defining your mission and what Rob mentioned as far as understanding the problem, really the pain point, what I would do here are the services. Yeah. Don't give don't give companies a choice on what they do. You're the yeah. expert. Yeah. You create a solution that uses these as ingredients. Yeah. It's like me going to a bakery and they're like, well, how much salt do you want? How much sugar? Well, yeah. How much flour? I don't know. Yeah. Make me something delicious. Yeah. So you know, give me something that I'm looking for. Yeah. So I would rather see you create a solution or three different solutions where you actually put it together, brand those things, okay. so that I understand you're talking my language, and I think that would probably resonate with companies a lot more, yeah. and it'll differentiate you from yeah. everyone else, because it'll be unique to you. Yeah, okay, yeah. 100% on that one. Yeah. 100%. Here's three. Is it five? What question? <laughs> okay, so we have questions. Are good. Just all starts at the top. The person at the top who believes in his people, people's health and well-being. Without that, nothing's going to happen. That's what this is going to focus on. You're getting down at the top, happy employee, he's a happy customer, profitable business. That's as simple as that. That's done by Southwest Airlines. So he's screwed up recently. So that's the point. So that's what most focus is. And customer, so employees should not pay a penny on this. That's the best investment any CEO can do. Yeah. We have a here. Right. That's what she does. Hi, I thought this was a great presentation and I appreciate your service. I have, a, I'm an amateur like into wellness, but just an amateur, YouTube amateur mostly. But um, my question from the business side of it, especially when it comes to the end user, do you have a way of tracking the success of the end users so that you can speak to companies and saying, you know, my people, they go through this program, they stick to it this much time, they achieve this kind of progress in their goals. Do you, do you have that kind of thing? Well, right now, we don't have anything yet because I moved on from individual sessions to companies now to reach more people. But um, this is definitely something for the future that we also maybe even implement an application where people can track their own results and then we can put this in a bigger picture for the companies itself when we keep on going with other businesses so that they can really see, okay, how other companies are doing by implementing this service. 
And, and I would also say, um, you know, a lot of this has to do with um, behavior, like changing yeah. customer behavior and mindset and that kind of thing. And I know personally for me, when it came to changing important things in my life that were foreign to me, you know, that came from external information, what helped was having a program or a book and then ongoing uh, media that I could listen to or watch that would refresh these things to solidify the changes I'm trying to make. Yeah. For example, you know, I went through the Dave Ramsey uh, financial uh, program that he has, and while we were getting out of debt, I was listening to his radio program and kind of reminded me of my why and the how. And even with um, eating, um, I read this book on intermittent fasting, so I listen to a podcast to kind of refresh and remind myself of what I'm doing every day, and it's very helpful. So I think <clears throat> when it comes to anything customer behavior, it might be a great enhancement to add some kind of source of media that people can take after they meet with you to continually remind them and refresh them of the program they do. Yes, that's a good point. I'm, I'm working on this, like with the Instagram, and also the thought behind is create a community so people can actually also exchange all their experiences and what they apply and how it's working for them, creating, for example, also WhatsApp groups in the company itself and everything to support this, yes. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> you talked about this a second ago, but what else can we as a community do for you? Well, basically, um, if anyone is interested to refer and know, for example, companies where it could be a fit that they are interested in the services to refer us to this company to reach out. Okay. This is like the main goal right now to really work with the business together and see how it's how it um, how we can make it work and how it's received and what we can do better, how to improve this and start the journey basically. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you. One thing I would recommend is that uh, when you contact the HR people, uh, ask them if they would like to do a lunch and learn, where basically you get to talk about a topic for an hour and they get to see you in action and say, hey, we'd like to have you back to do more of this. So. When you talk to HR people, ask them about that as, as your first introduction to it. So next, we are going to hear from Rod McKenzie, and story changes everything. Rod. So um, here we go. I am three decades of telling stories. The stories that I have created for my clients have generated over $100 million in revenue for them. But a lot of that is in product uh, testimonials, product stories, uh, company stories, and all kinds of different mixes. And I have a computer science degree, yet I've been in marketing for 28 years. So I'm a logical creative, which is kind of different in today's world, I guess. So stories, we think in stories. We dream in stories. We talk in stories. We solve problems in stories. If you are selling facts and figures, you are not communicating. <laughs> Flat out. People don't care. And number one, people don't care about you at all. They don't care about your business, they don't care about anything, unless you have something that they need. That's the whole key in marketing, is helping people, ma helping match people with what they need with what you offer. So, neural coupling, they've done a functional MRI where they've taken a storyteller and a listener and if, when you use facts and figures, only part of the listener's brain fires. But when you do telling stories, the listener's brain fires exactly like the storyteller's brain. It is one of the most powerful things that you can do is to be able to talk in stories because people understand it. And you can present the information the way that you want your prospect, client, customer, employee, anyone to hear. So it's incredibly critical to talk in stories because people visualize, people, you know, helping people visualize what you're doing. Like for example, um, I'm gonna tell you a story in two different ways. Uh, a loud noise happened, people walked through a hole in the wall, walked a few more steps, looked up and got soaked. 
Right now your brain's going, what? I can say that's a sonic boom and the jet exploded and it's jet fuel, right? Maybe some of you didn't think of that. But what if I tell you this story in this way is I heard a huge thunder boom and I just moved to Florida and I love thunderstorms. So I threw the door open, ran outside, looked up, got totally soaked and was dancing in the rain. And he started singing. Okay. The second story, you visualize it the exact same way that I told it. In your mind, in your own context. So I'm able to take my context and immediately relate to you. The power of story is, you know, we use most, the time that we use most of our brain is in storytelling. That's when our brain fires the most. After Mythbusters did a, a whole episode on that. And 30%, over 30% of our brain is being used when we're doing stories. So you're telling us. So, why does everyone talk in facts and figures? Why, don't you, why do people sell products and stuff feelings? <laughs> do you guys sell feelings? Do you, do you sell the, transit, the transformation for your client or do you sell your product? Yeah. Right? If you don't sell, if you sell your product, you're an e-com company, you're a commodity. Now, believe me, that can be great. I, one of my clients is a, um, they make frames for Samsung and the frame TV. And they do $20 million a year. And it's econ, and that's a great living. But now they're coming to me because they need a brand so they can take their sales to a whole different level. Because they need to tell the story. All they're doing is selling ads, you know, selling product. So if you want to make money, you can do that through just selling product, depending on what the product is, but you're gonna compete on price. You're gonna be a commodity, and most of the time, commodities, people that sell commodities go bankrupt. So this is why businesses fail. So you see here that cash flow is the number one reason why businesses fail, poor cash flow. This study was done by CB Insights. They've done post-mortems on hundreds of companies. And the number one reason people fail, businesses fail, is because they don't have good cash flow. But look at the number two reason. Nobody wants or needs your product. Has anybody ever had their family say, oh, that's an awesome thing. You should go out and make that product and sell it and not go out and get any other validation? That happens most of the time. And that's why so many companies fail. And if you look at number number one reason, is it if nobody wants or needs your product that you're gonna have poor cash flow? Okay, so now, but let me give you a, a contrary example of, or not contrary, but if I took a rock and painted it and put googly eyes on it and put it in a Happy Meal box and told you this is your companion at your desk, so you're not gonna be lonely. Pet rock in the 80s. A guy actually did this and made 20 million bucks. He did it, he sold a rock with a story. Okay, he sold rocks. Okay? Pet rocks. You can tell me you can sell anything with the right story. 90% of sales is the story. It's you know, 90% of your business is marketing. Because you can have the best products in sliced bread, and it won't sell unless you're able to tell the right story about it. So why? Lack of clarity. If you don't have to know who you are, what you are, why you are, who you do it for, what, what you, you do, do, all the different kind of four things, then you don't have clarity of your business. And that causes all kinds of things. Not knowing what to say, not knowing if your business even matters. Four lead gen marketing sales. Has anybody ever had any one of these problems? Okay, we all have. We're entrepreneurs, right? We're going to start a business. We keep going and do try one hypothesis after another. But every hypothesis you try, every time you go out and validate a product, any time you give an MVP for a product, minimum viable product, you have to have a story around it. So a purpose-driven core story is your strategic narrative. Um, there are some really talented people doing this. And uh, it all comes based down off of a, a gentleman named Chet Holmes. And he took Charlie Munger, who is Warren Buffett's business partner, he took and doubled to triple the sales of nine different divisions in his company year over year, and sometimes double, triple, even, you know, in the same division and all, all nine divisions. And he called this a stadium pitch. And so in other words, if you have 50,000 people in a stadium and they're all your ideal client, you have to, they have to stay in their seats for 10 seconds. How are you gonna keep them there? How are you gonna keep them from walking out after 10 seconds? Well, it is not facts and figures. Let me guarantee that because that only uses two of the eight information centers in the brain, and you're not gonna engage people. So they're gonna get up and walk out. So, you know, it's, you have to know everything about your ideal client. You need to know their pit of despair. 
That is the whole key to your story, is knowing your client's pit of despair, because your only job is to take your client from their pit of despair to their promised land. That's it for a business, that in its most simplistic form. You're going to take the problem that they have, solve it, so that they can be happy. But the key is you have to know who they are, what they are, why they are, the feelings that they have. You have to do not just a, a, a you know a problem analysis, but an emotional analysis, psychographic analysis, all the different kinds of things. So our purpose is to help leaders experience a mind shift and become purpose driven and strategic strategy focused through storytelling. And creating stories, overall strategic narrative, it drives everything. Absolutely everything. Uh, your pitch decks. I'm helping several companies. I mentor down at incubators in Melbourne and uh, at Tampa Bay Wave Business Accelerator in Tampa, uh, NASDAQ. And this is what I do. I help people create their core story so that they can have the answer to all these things based on their story. So I'm trying to do a new offering here. And I want to have, this is what I'm asking you guys. I'm going to do a, a method. I have a four week session. So this is my core story mastery. So I take four sessions, I create your strategic narrative. Learn, you learn how to create stories for anything, anyone, and anywhere. And you learn how to integrate it and use AI. That's my four week program. I sell this a lot. This is what I do with my clients. I went from eight to 12 weeks down to four weeks using AI because AI is an incredible researcher. But what I've also done is I've taken my whole formula that I've spent years developing and I've turned it into a process where I can use it with AI and deliver after one interview, deliver you back a core story for your business, including six word stories, elevator pitches, mission statement, vision statement, a full strategic narrative, a day in the life of your client in their pit of despair and a day in the life in their promised land. Of all kinds of different things is what I would deliver to you. And so I'm going to get your, I'm going to ask for opinions on this in just a minute. So those are the two offerings that I have. And this is how you connect with me. So this is, by the way, a digital business card. So if you scan that, there's just my digital business card where you can download your contact. Uh, it has all the information that I have. So I'm Rod McKenzie with Story Changes Everything. But by the way, Story does really change everything you do. Yes. Good presentation, Rod. But I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna throw you a curveball. Awesome. Be brutal, guys. I love being brutal to people, and so you gotta be brutal to me. <laughs> because in your in, in your presentation, you told two short stories. Yep. Thunderstorm and Pet Rock. Yep. Your storytelling. Yep. You gave us a lot of facts and figures. <laughs> you started off with facts and figures. I'm going to challenge you. You can take your presentation and turn the whole thing into your story. Very, very good. And I will take that challenge and the next time that I present, or the next time you guys have, I will present at the drop of a dime if you have a cancel out. And I will present this in a story starting, I'll be ready next week, whatever you guys need. So, very good challenge. You know, this is uh, do you we need a mic? No, that's okay. No, we need it for on, we need it for online. Okay. This is this is this is what I have seen in two months. Uh, they don't talk about themselves. It's just talking about the business. You have to talk about yourself to get close to people. Once they know for what you stand for, what you are, who you are, they will eventually engage in business. This is one thing I have seen and learned traveling all over the world. And that's I think is one thing that teacher said. You have to talk about your story. Make this to people know because they want to know about you. Because we, we know about your business, but we don't know you. Thank you. <laughs> Try. And everything Ross says, 100%. I, I just want to second <laughs> everything he said. Um, but there's this old adage in business that's people buy who they like and trust. Absolutely. That's partially right. I'm going to revise it. People buy who they like, 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 and trust in that proportion. And the way you be likable without being a freaking dork or without being egotistical, you tell a story. Story is the key to a person's heart because once you own their heart, it's a super highway to their brain, to their mind, where the buying decision is made. If you go through their mind with facts and figures, there's, there's no way to get to the heart. You're not going to win something over that way. So everything Rod is saying is 100% true. And uh, thank you for sharing.
Yeah. So I, I had a quick question. One of the concerns that I had when I listened to your uh, your webinar, and I suggest people do that. It was, it was really very, very informative. What makes your version of storytelling better than somebody else? Why are we listening to you rather than your competitor in the line? Very good question. Um, one of my biggest competitors is people with story brand. For $10,000, you can go out and become a story brand consultant and they'll refer business to you. Doesn't matter what your experience is. Doesn't matter what you know, what you don't know. You went through their course. Most storytellers like out there are using the story brand in one form or another and they don't have the experience. I've actually sold 90 million storytelling sales publications that have actually generated over $100 million in, in revenue for my clients. And with so for me, why, you, why would my method work? Because I have put it into a formula that anyone can use. And I teach you that formula. I'm not someone that's gonna go out there, I can do it for you, I can be a consultant, but I would much rather teach you how to fish than do all the fishing for you. And so I'm gonna give you a, a formula that is pretty much foolproof if you actually use it. So if I may make a statement um, or an observation, Yes, people, but well, you started out, you felt the need to start out with facts and figures, okay? And, and, and uh, Scott had a great point. I mean, we, we were hoping for a, more of a story. So the thing is, is I, in my experience, I use facts and figures, you all know, I, I know all the facts and figures. So I, I give facts and figures because it's a tangible way for anybody to understand the difference, right? Right. Once they under, once we can get them to, once we hook them that there's a difference between this and that because it's it's mathematic basically, <coughs> then we can provide them with a story about how that happened and how we fix it. Right. Okay. Um, Chet Holmes, uh, who is by far the expert, he passed away 10 years ago, but he, he created a lot of these methods that people use all over the place today. And um, he, what he said, and I was going to mention this, but I didn't have time to make this comment, market data is incredibly powerful and you can tell stories with market data. The one thing that I probably didn't do, which I teach people to do, is I take people and have them encompass any fact and figure within its own story. So you're going to have uh, the fact and figure, what the, the problem or whatever you're dealing with, and then what the transformation was with that, a negative or a positive transformation. And that's probably something that I didn't do. Of course, I was doing this at 11.30 last night, so, which is an excuse, not a reason. Right? So I need to be better than prepared. Stories work. Uh, we're developing a new company making magnetic loops, and I always start out by explaining how NASA developed all this. Have them right away. If you right. the word NASA, you tell them a great story, they love the story, and they're interested. If you just say, make magnetic loops, well, so what? Okay. What's a magnetic loop? Yeah, exactly right. Hey, I'm wearing some right now, but it doesn't mean anything to anybody. The point is, you tell the story of NASA, and you have them, and that's exactly what you want to do. We're working on another company, which is a collector show, and what we need now is we need to some sort of elevator speech, a story right. that we can tell people who are going to understand what we're doing. So let me ask you a question, that. you and anybody else. If I were to go out and say I worked with a biotech company, and the statement that I helped them create their story, their teller story, is what is on their angel investor's website. Is that something that would impress you? Sure. Because I helped them get that angel investor funding just by the story that I helped them create. Would client experiences at the beginning? Because here's, here's my thought. This is a very different presentation than what I give normally. Okay, okay. normally I, 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 I don't sit here and try to buy everything in six minutes. And so I, I do lunch and learns, I'll do an hour meeting, and there's a lot more time there to develop these things. But what stories would you want to hear or what kind of a story? Has anybody ever heard of the book, The Goal? Go ahead. Okay. The Goal is a book about processes and constraints and bottlenecks. It's a 
one of the best-selling process books of all time. It's a, a business book encompassed in a, in a narrative. And so what kind of stories would you want to hear that would you think that would impact you more about my services? As you can tell, I'm trying to have you be brutal with me, okay? Please, if there are any ideas. We have a question here. Good morning, I'm Ann Greco, and this is my first time here. Thank you. you didn't raise your hand earlier. I didn't, yeah, I don't know if you saw me. Anyway, uh, uh, I wanted um, uh, to say that I enjoyed your presentation, and I believe the strength in it was the call to action, because everybody wants to know when you make that offer, what I'm gonna get from it. And you were very clear about what you offer. The question that came up for me was, well, I have Toastmasters mm -hmm. on one camp. I have improv and comedy club that are modalities to make me a better storyteller. And what is it that distinguishes you or where do you fall in related to developing storytelling skills? It's not my verbal acumen about telling stories, I can tell you that. I'm much better in writing than I am in verbal. And that's probably why my videos get laughed at. <laughs> we got a question. Here. So, hey, Rod, Peter Cook. Yeah. My question is Are you selling my business a four week program to create a storytelling system? So that basically I take the, your four week class and I get this storytelling system that you teach me. And now I can implement this business, I can implement that business, or something that I can just keep in one business and cycle it through for a lifetime. So not only is that what I'm selling that, but I'm also selling you, your company, I'm helping you develop your strategic narrative and teaching you how to tell stories for your business from here to eternity. So that's what the four week system does. Because once you have the formula down, you can look at it on paper, and you can start anywhere, and you can tell any story to anyone at any time. Yeah. One thing I, I see lacking here is gestures, because the gestures can really set the point. Like, I want to talk about three things. Use your fingers, step here, step there, step there with each point. Those things really help ground your presentation that might be helpful. OK, thank you. I'm going to go back and answer your question about what stories, and, and I'm trying to think of, I, I don't have anything specific, but it's, it's really a way to gain the alignment and, um, and the grounding of, of getting everybody on board with who you are and what you do. Right. Um, because when you, you dove right into the importance of stories, it's like, well, I get that, but who are you to tell me? Okay. So, so definitely, um, I. So my credibility slide was not good enough. No, not for me. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was the, the the bullets were one thing, but that wasn't a story. Right. So it was, you know, like how did it was the outcome, you know, impact and outcome of who right. I've helped rather than than just the bullets of who you are. Like tell who you are through how you helped. I think would help just. So I have a slide that I use in the other presentations that shows, you know, probably 20 to 30 different logos of clients. Mm -hmm. So that would probably add a little more credibility. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Right, Ron, I, guess, yeah. I guess that we're going to have all the other questions I'll answer after. Yes, uh, I'm sure Rod will be happy to stick around uh, if you've got more questions. But Rod, what else can we as a community do for you? You know? come back next time that they pick me out of the audience and say, we only have one presenter today mm -hmm. and I will give you a story. And so, but I want your feedback, honestly. Uh, my contact information here, reach out to me. I would greatly appreciate whatever you could do because I'm, you know, have you ever heard that the cobbler's kids don't have you know, good shoes? Yep. Okay. So I'm very, very, very good at doing this for other people, but doing it for myself. You know, I mean, that's, that's our, our hardest work that we have is working on ourselves. So I appreciate all the feedback. Any further feedback that you have, catch me after here or catch me, uh, you know, contact me. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted to piggyback off of something that Josh had said, too. Uh, we as people make decisions based on emotions 
and then we justify with logic. Now we think we are logical. I need a new car. I'd really like a new car. And so I'm going to get a new car. Oh, I should get it because it's, you know, it's new and so it's more reliable. I, I'm going to save money on, on repairs and it's going to have better gas mileage so I can save money on gas. I just want a new car. But I come up with these reasons to explain to my wife why I'm going to take on a car payment. So, so that's when you tell stories, tap into the emotion first and then give them the logic afterward. So next week we're going to hear from Michael Frost right there in the very center of the room. This is Michael's second time here and already he's jumping in. So if you have not presented yet, here's a, here, this will be his third week here next week. If you have not presented yet, why not? So we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're also looking for a second speaker. So if anybody would like to give a presentation uh, and you want to fast track it for next week, see Josh, let him know it's coming. Otherwise, I know we've got other speakers coming up. Kia's uh, talking in a couple weeks. <laughs> And, who? and Lewis in a couple weeks. And Lewis in a couple weeks. So, so we have one spot next week if you want to hurry and fill it. Uh, download the chat. Uh, there wasn't much going on, but if you're on Zoom and you want to download the chat, click the three dots at the bottom right uh, corner and save the chat. If you want a copy of the chat, which was basically a question that Karen had for Melissa and I did not read it in time, but if you want a copy of that, email me and I'll send it to you. Uh, join us on meetup.com. Connect with somebody you met with today. Meet a new person. Ask them for coffee. You can walk to Barney's, which is one of our coffee suppliers, or you can walk to New General uh, just up the road. Mike Sunners and I are going to meet at New General here in a little bit. So uh, meet somebody for coffee for lunch, Zoom call or phone call. Get to know each other. That's how we build our community. So thank you all for coming. And we will. Oh, 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 wait. Dan. Dan has something. After this meeting is my monthly class on business leadership and ethics it's located at the incubator where we used to meet it's a one hour class today we are covering ethical use of chat gpt so that's a popular topic and uh even better we have food from Publix. so it's free uh, if you have an hour from 11 30 to 12 30 it's at the incubator on colonial great and rupert so Orlando Perdura is having its its uh, sixth monthly happy hour startup event. Um, it's always the third Monday of every month. And the best place in the world to learn, as you can see from here, about entrepreneurship is from other entrepreneurs. And second have, best. Second best. <laughs> and we have uh, we have 115 people on average show up to this event. It's free. Come on in, have a good time, meet other entrepreneurs. Go to meetup.com and look up Orlando Preneur. And hopefully I'll get a QR code put up. There. So what is it? Where is it this month? Uh, this month it's at the Copper Rocket Pub in Maitland. Okay, Copper Rocket Pub. So right on Mills. All right, well, thank you very much, and we will see you all next week.